Hello, I'm Mike Trusiak, and welcome to the latest edition of Community College News, news for all six NBCC campuses. Later in the show, we will take a look at some of the events taking place at each campus location and some tips on bathroom etiquette. But first, thousands of people could not make phone calls today. Bell Alliance says a cut fiber cord caused a telephone outage throughout most of the province for several hours. It was repaired by 2 p.m. NBCC campuses now have student governments. Jeff Stairs spoke with student representatives as they learn the ropes of their new positions. <laughs> student council elections have wrapped up at most NBCC campuses. Newly appointed representatives are now preparing to go to work. I definitely want an impact and, and to leave a mark, so that's definitely what I'm looking forward to, is just to be able to help and facilitate any way I can. The Student Representative Council, or SRC, is responsible for keeping students informed of matters that affect their time in school. But the council also serves a greater purpose. The SRC's goals are defined in its constitution. By working together, the SRC and campus administration resolve emerging ideas, take a proactive approach to new and or innovative ideas and issues, and provide a meaningful experience for students on the campus. Woodstock SRC President Stephanie Booker agrees that being involved with the council offers students more than just an introduction to campus politics. I think if you're more comfortable and you're more relaxed and you've got a fallback of somebody to, you know, talk to and have a little bit of enjoyment while you're helps with your learning. Although some schools are still trying to fill empty positions, student council will soon be in session. Most schools are holding their first meetings next week. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. Tradespeople studying New Brunswick are optimistic about their work futures despite government data showing limited prospects. Michael McDonald spoke to some of these people. The Government of Canada reports that work prospects for tradespeople are limited in New Brunswick, but that hasn't dampened the spirits of students at NBCC. Uh, five years from now, I hope to be uh, running my own business. At, least for, uh, at five years, I hope to be running the business for at least a year and a half already. According to the Construction Sector Council and the Atlantic Province's Economic Council, New Brunswick's construction industry is headed for a downturn. One instructor says it's not as bad as it sounds. People say there's no work. I can honestly say in 38 years that I could have worked seven days a week even right today. Grant has seen many changes throughout his long career. He says students have to be willing to adapt. Yes, the money will come and it's just a fact of, like I say, being versatile, being global, being wanting to travel a little bit. Pulchis remains optimistic. He knows what he'll do if he's turned down. Um, look harder <laughs> or just find something else. Of all the regions in New Brunswick, Moncton Rishabukto was the only one with a positive outlook, according to the government. Grant says that grads have to be willing to go where the work is. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. Switching back into school mode can be a tall order from a summer break for any student. But for mature students, it can be even more daunting. Our Ethan Hazlitt has more on the challenges mature students face when returning to school. Going to college can be difficult, especially for those who waited a few years after high school. I remembered why I didn't go to university after I got out of school. Now I'm back seeing if I can learn anything. Vale came back to school after being in the workforce for several years. The transition is a big adjustment for her. Just being in a routine and whatnot, not used to being, you know, in the routine and doing the classroom thing. And Teachers like Donna Snow respect those who come back. Instructors view the extra life experience as a bonus in the classroom. I think mature students are wonderful in the classroom. Uh, they bring an element of um, expertise because they've been out in the workplace. They know what it's like uh, out there. They know what employers are expecting. And they take their studies seriously, like they understand that the value of the dollar. Diane Lawson works with mature students every day. She says a few easy things can be done in preparation. Um, I find out things like uh, do they need to have specific materials to work with? Uh, do they need to have textbooks? Do they need to buy them in advance? Some basic things like that that they need to find out to prepare themselves. Mature students come to MBCC for an education they hope will lead to a career. 
Anyone looking for help readjusting to the school life can talk to their local guidance counselor. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. Halloween is just a month away, but NBCC Miramichi held a pumpkin fling last Saturday. Engineers and geoscientists of New Brunswick demonstrated their inventions to the Miramichi campus and town by launching some into the Miramichi River. Thanks to James Blanchard for sending the video. Last week, students at St. John campus had the opportunity to learn how to scuba dive. April Phillips went to the event at the Aquatic Center and sent us her photos. Students at the Moncton campus participated at NBCC Does the Dome last week. SRC members shot a few pics of the survivor style event. One of the things college students truly hate is having to roll out of bed at the crack of dawn to get to classes. But more often than not, the only relief from their zombified state is a cup of coffee. NBCC journalism student Kyle DuPont reports on this caffeine craze. Most students stick to a regular routine, breakfast with a coffee or two. Throughout the day, they rely on more than just those early morning drinks to keep them going. At least five or six cups. Anywhere between two to three pots. I drink about two to three coffees a day. Every morning, many students congregate at local coffee shops where baristas like Brandy McGuire serve dozens of students each day. I do see uh, a lot of young people. Um, I know there are more mature students at the college and they come over. They will come in uh, several times a day. Uh, I would say two to three times. I suggest a medium roast because that has the most caffeine. Studies show that people should drink no more than four eight ounce cups of coffee a day, which is the equivalent of 500 milligrams of caffeine. But overindulgence can have a negative impact on our lifestyles. Uh, coffee in moderation is really not bad for a person. It's, these are becoming part of our society and our drinks that are um, on a daily basis and that's where the danger can come in. Cummings also says it's the additives that we put in our coffee that can cause health concerns. If you're putting cream and sugar in it, if you're a diabetic or you have cholesterol problems, that then can be an issue. So there's other things um, that you can add to your coffee that's, uh, or drink it black. Coffee is the most valuable exported product next to petroleum. Canada alone imports over $780 million worth of coffee each year. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Next time you grab a pocket full of change to buy food from a vending machine, you may want to consider this. Most of the foods are high in sugar and trans fat, but some vending companies are offering healthier foods. Vending machines may be an easy way to grab a bite, but recent health concerns over the foods stacked inside may change what you can buy. Some of the foods that are found in your typical vending machines are high fat, um, potato chips, um, chocolate, high sugar, high fat foods, which don't provide really, they give you that quick energy, but they don't give you a lot of protein and things that are important. Some vending companies though are trying to change what students purchase from these machines. Ryan Johnstone is Vice President of Business Development at Lean Machine. And so the way that Lean Machine works is that we pre-select all of our products to be either maximum or moderate nutrition uh, based upon the government guidelines that have been identified. Under the Nova Scotia Food and Nutrition Policy, foods with a maximum or moderate amount of nutritional value can be served daily, while foods with minimum values have been banned. Johnstone also says there is a financial benefit for schools that buy a lead machine. The way that ours works is we basically say, you know, we're going to allow you to operate the machine after we train you, and at the end of the month, you're going to keep, you know, X percentage of sales. While the New Brunswick's food and nutrition policy does not place mandatory regulations on serving maximum or moderate rated foods, they did ban the minimum standards in 2007. Have you ever had an awkward moment in the washroom? In this editorial, Tony Bourgeois says it is time for better bathroom etiquette. Hey man, how's it going? Power classes? Mine are going pretty good. Alright, I'll see you later. You'd be surprised to see how often things like this happen in the men's room. Some people simply do not know public washroom etiquette. In the men's room, there are a series of unwritten rules. 
Some are obvious. No physical contact when at the urinal. This is not a place to be chummy. Some are a little more subtle, like choosing which urinal to use. But there are some basic and important rules that everyone should follow. No cell phones. Using cell phones while at the urinal is disturbing for people around you, and for the people you're talking to. Call them back, they will understand. No talking. There are exceptions to this rule. Dude, watch your aim. But for the most part, no one wants to talk while doing their business. The most important rule is simple. It's also the one most guys hate seeing broken the most. But I guess uh, maybe when you see them go in the washroom and do their thing and then walk out with a wash in their hands. Not washing the hands always bother me. Like when they go to grab the door and, and, uh, and they just walk out without... Wash your hands. It only takes about 20 seconds and it's very unhygienic not to. So make the men's room a less awkward place. Please follow the rules. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. That's our show for today. For more of our work, visit our website at jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.